I'm not able to delete anything. Like backspace should delete it. Right? Try this one. Save it and try this. Let's try this example. Okay. So AP is undeclared. Let's go and see. Let's go and see it. Um, oh yeah. Semicolon is missing here. Yeah. A. Yep. So let's try. Let's save this. Okay. And now let's see the logical result. Some of all is. Um... No, the result is not yet come. Let's go back to the source code. <coughs> so now. Uh, some you while uh, is there something which we are missing here or lf this yeah. chained function you know within the printer function some mm. what is this the first one is eight right yeah yeah so shall i delete that uh, just for the sake of no 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 that should be fine mod lf is also perfectly fine so double ap and double was correct ah see this is line number 18 is not needed why do we need line number 18 that was a part of for loop please remove that oh okay yeah yeah did it yeah, yeah, seven tomorrow. What you do is you open one more terminal when you yeah. do that right away. First open the source code. It opens in the same place here, yeah, run this. Open. Can you open that uh, another one, the tab? Yeah, here we can build the compile the program. GCC. Okay. It becomes easy, no, to switch. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Argo output. Yeah. Let's try again. No, the result is not yet done. Let's see the code. Yeah. Can we have a print statement inside this so that we print the result? Yeah, let's print the result. What does it say? Let's debug that. Print it on model F. Slash in. After double quotes, comma, and then try to see your result. Result. Okay. We'll also print the value and see what is coming in value. Um, Can you print the val also? Comma val, right? No. Ah, then in that case, mod LF, one more val. You can print that, both variables, but in that case, you have to give one more LF. Say mod LF and after that gives some space and LF within the print of double quotes. Right. How many ever ever variables you want, whatever data type, you yeah. have to keep mentioning that. So don't give slash in, otherwise it, you know, it will be oh, like good. a new line. Yeah. So mod LF space maybe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or and LF. Yeah. A and D mod LF again. It becomes easy to differentiate that. Okay, this is another digit. This is another digit. And LF, okay. Uh, Slash in. And after that, and give a space and then mod LF. For readability, you know, mod is missing. Mod is must. Oh, okay. That and is just a separator message for us. So that when you see the output window. Okay. You can see that is an and. 
Okay. The message it will come out. I think again you have missed it. First and then more. Stand. Okay. Um. Okay. One more thing is the result is equal to zero or O. That is also there. Line number thirteen. Um. Line number thirteen. Result is equal to. Does it looks like zero? Yeah. You know, val is having a different kind of appearance than result. Can you see that? Yeah. Can you make it zero? Yeah. Is it zero? Yeah. Yeah. I think I was seeing it as a. Yes. Yeah, skip. Save it. Yeah. Um, let's, so uh, now printf should be closed. You know, after mod, I was willing to give a space. Okay, not a mod. After and ampersand, you write wrote right. Yeah. Yeah, I wanted to give an a uh, space after m m space. Yeah, just as a separator, a oh, and b, okay. c and d, e and. Something. Oh, the and uh, logical end. Yeah. After lf, you give a slash m. I'm sorry. Yeah, line number eighteen colon eighteen. Yeah. So we can see what is happening here. Okay. Yeah. No, you would have done there only. Yeah. Okay. Line number four. Okay, come back. Semicolon is missing. Missing at the end of the printer. Type colon eighteen. Just type colon eighteen. Okay. Okay. Then you say shift dollar. Shift dollar will directly take you to the end of the line. Then say append a. I think vi must be you know practice a little bit by you. This editor. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean we are not used to it. That's why. Correct. Yeah. Save it. Come on. No, no, no need to come out. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. No, no, no. So what's happening is the results are coming correctly. So seven thirty one is correct. Uh, ah, yeah. inside. But the, by the time we print, the value is getting lost. Let's go back. Yeah, open the source code. Can you think of what's going on? So, I think after the some <laughs> function is over, the re, the value is not being retained. Correct. Yeah. So return is not happening because you have not returned the result. Correct. Right. Yeah. So what we should do after V A end, we can do re return result. This function sum is supposed to return what? Return the value me. double. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So my intent is after doing the sum, my final value is going to be stored in which variable? Result. Variable. Result. Yeah. Correct. So I must return the result here. Then only it will come here. So what's happening right now? Function is being called. But after being computed, the output value is not being returned by you. So because okay. you have not given a return, it cannot be printed over here. Okay. Getting it, getting zero. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, right so last after line. The, the result, uh, right? Yeah, not here. At the end of the function, right? After your function starts, completes all the job, return will be the last statement. Correct. Correct. So come back to line number twenty-one. Open a new line. Before the body of the function, yeah. Open a new line. Yeah. Here you should say what return. Um, result. Uh, result. Um, result. Sorry. Control M. Yeah. yeah. Of. Oh, no problem. Open. Open the file again. Don't. No. No. Yeah. Do yeah. it right now. 
I keep doing the same mistake again. Yeah, no problem, no problem. It is all about you know just getting used to a couple of things. That's it. Yeah. So now now it's correct. So what was the mistake? Um, so what was happening is everything was computed well. Only the challenge was after the function call is over. I yeah. wasn't returning the value here. See here you are calling the function, correct? Yeah. yeah. Some function is called within a function, correct? Correct. So what yeah. it is supposed to do? It is supposed to return the value. If you do not return the value, how mm -hmm. will the uh, sum know what will be the last return value? So some some garbage, maybe zero. Sometimes something else also, right? Oh, okay. Okay. So a return should be specified if you have a function type being there. If you remember, a function has multiple parameters and a return value. Okay. So whenever you have a return, you yeah. must return the result over there or the computed value which you expect. Yeah. Correct? Yes. So that was missing, number one. Okay. Okay, now you can apply your for loop also where you had planned, you know, the first one itself to be an hint for the the end of the loop. It means if you pass eight, then the next eight elements will be computed. I think that was your logic. That was the logic again. I mean, yeah. uh, the hard yeah, but this is this is more, uh, uh, I would say, legal, right? Yes. Because in this yeah. case, you can keep extending the element till it counts to zero dot zero, and then it works. Yeah. Okay. So, so is it? It's perfect. No problem. Yeah, yeah. I understood uh, the concept. <laughs> Good. I took, no, took a little more time. Though. It takes. It takes. Initially, you will take some more time. Slowly, you know, the time gap will reduce. The moment you start writing, the time gap yeah. will reduce. Okay, in two, three more sessions. The coding is all yeah. about practicing a lot on your own. Yeah. Okay. So, any other questions you have on this? On the function side, you have any questions? Um, no, I think I think I'm good. Yeah. You're good. Okay. So all the five types function, you know, right? A function which do not take any variable and doesn't return any value, and then you say yes. Right. I mean, then you also know that you can take parameter and return. The one which you have written right yeah, now, it yeah. takes the first as a known parameter and then you can pass any parameters, right? Yeah, yeah dot, dot, dot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that's fine. Now let's get into uh, pointers I wanted to introduce you. How about okay. structures and unions? You have any questions there? You have understood that? Um, Packing, padding, all those, remember, right? Bit fields. Yeah, I, I remember. Yeah, I, I haven't, I haven't gone through again, but uh, yeah, I think I once I go through um, it should be the fine, video right? again, right. I should be able to. Yeah. Fine. Yes. So I think for yeah. today, let's get started for, you know, the pointer maybe. Okay. Okay. Yes. So. So I think I'll be sharing my screen now. Stop sharing. Yeah. Okay. So tell me if you can see the screen right now. I can see. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. One second. I just stopped it. Restarting again. Yeah. Coming up and then. So pointer is, a, you know, already explained to you at a very high level that you know it is the concept via which you can, you know, support indirect addressing mechanism, right? Yes. And what is a pointer, by the way, that it's a variable, of course. So pointer is a variable. Okay. And often, T 
six for a cube by is. Two or four <coughs> or more cells ordinarily. based on architecture. So the idea is very simple here, that pointer is uh, one of such variable, which is present in, you know, it occupies two or four or maybe more bytes, depending on architecture. Say, if it's a 16-bit architecture, then it may take two bytes of memory. If it is a 32-bit architecture, it may take four bytes. So, you know, irrespective of whatever the compiler is, the main purpose of it is to hold that process and it tries to dereference or reference a memory location, okay? okay? So that is the whole idea of, you know, you're trying to use pointers. Okay. Now, the second thing is, you know, the types of the pointers. So there are three ways of uh, pointers or three concepts. The first one is the we call it as type pointers. Type pointers are used for pointer to a data. Okay. The second one is called as code pointer, or maybe I'll say you as, yeah, void pointers. Now, void pointers are used for managing addresses or any type. When you are not sure of a type, then you prefer to use mm -hmm. the, you know, void pointers. And third one, when you use it is more for, you know, code pointers or pointer to, we call it as function pointers. So this is pointer to code. It means we can refer a code or a okay. code block or a function itself. Okay. Function itself represents a piece of code, right? A set of instructions which we use. Yes. So these are the different types of the pointer which we use. What is this? Now, first, let's try to understand about the location logic. So if we consider, you know, this as pointers, and this will be like, you know, the memory locations. So considering that this is a piece of my memory, which represents some part of my RAM. Okay.
So think of some memory growing. What happened? Something else. So first, the type pointers refers to like, you know, you have a type pointer, for example, int is a type pointer. Okay. okay. As declared, say IP. So here IP is an example of a pointer, which has an asterisk is only for symbolic purpose that we understand that it is supposed to hold an address. So this is an example of a pointer to an int's address. Why? Because the idea of pointer is what? It just holds the address of an or the location of a variable okay. or the function. Okay. Or the address. Okay. Now int IP is an example of such place where IP has its own address. And when I say int data say assigns to zero cross FF. So assume that there is something like an address of data. Okay. And here is where you have written something like FF. Okay. Okay. Now the moment you say you are a, a pointer, a pointer has its own address, say, here, address of IP. So we can take some example of the addresses also. So think that pointer is zero cross one, two, three, four is one address. Mm -hmm. And data has some address here, zero cross four, zero, zero, zero. Just take an example. Okay. So IP internally will be storing here. Guess what? Zero cross four zero zero. Getting it. So this refers to IP. Okay. Indirectly, it means the IP is pointing it to this location. So whenever you say, when will this happen? When I say IP is equal to address of data. If I say IP is equal to data, this is not correct. Okay. Okay, this is not going to work. Why? Because pointer is only supposed to hold the address address not the data we are trying to directly assign some scalar value to it it will complain the compiler will say it's not matching type okay. or if you force this warning to overcome then you know that value itself which you are assigning say if you assign directly something like ff ff still will be referred by pointer as some other address mm -hmm. so it will go to some ff address and try to fetch the value okay so always remember pointer is used for manipulating indirectly an address away from being that location. The whole idea is that if a device to a device is connected, you can, you remember memory map device example? Yes. Yeah. So you write to that device and as good as writing to pointer is right, as good as writing to that device, right? Yeah. That's the whole purpose of trying to achieve this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. It is also possible. So this is an example of what? typed pointer. It means whenever you want to hold an address of a double, you should have what kind of a pointer? Double pointer. Whenever you want to hold an address of a structure, you should have a structure pointer. You should not try to use integer pointer to hold the address of double pointer or an integer point to pointer to hold the address of what? A structure pointer. Keep it very simple. There is a very simple formula for handling pointers. Okay, we call it as 
Yeah, yes, yes. I think you must be aware. Mm, no. <laughs> Keep it stupid and simple. Stupid and simple, okay. <laughs> or simple and stupid, something yeah. like that. So the more you write simple and stupid code, much better it is. And second is a dry principle in object coupling. Mm -hmm. Dry stands for do not repeat yourself. Okay. Do not repeat yourself. This is a, a part of modular code design. How to write very effective cohesive co coding, robust software de development. And there is another thing called as wet, mm -hmm. which is called as we enjoy typing. Okay. Okay, so we should not be using this as a you know robust code mechanic. We should always follow the kiss and the dry. And we should always avoid the right. wet concept. So writing a very robust, robust, robust software is actually a practice of these uh, principles. Okay. So the more your code is more case, it is much, much easier to maintain. That's what people say. Okay. So if you get some chance, can you bookmark yourself in uh, Wiki to know about, you know, kiss and dry principles in software? Okay, sure. Yeah. You could find something in Wikipedia? Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. So now let's get into, I was talking about preferring of what? Type pointers to type addresses only. Never mismatch the type. So keep it very simple. I have to hold an integer's address. Mm -hmm. I will always hold an integer pointer. Now let's try to explain this. So the moment I say after this plus plus IP, what does it mean? Um, so I'm doing some arithmetic on up. Yeah. So it's uh, the address is. Uh, yeah, it will increase the address by four bytes. Yeah. So it may be pointing to some next four bytes. Yeah. So if I take say character pointer IP say CP, if I take an integer CP, which is IP, mm -hmm. and if I take a double, say DP, and if I take a structure, say device, star FP. So when I say plus plus CP, when I say plus plus IP, when I say plus plus DP, and when I say plus plus DFP, what is the difference? Um, char character is uh, one, one byte. Um, Correct. So the IP is in um, by four bytes, yeah. And, uh, Consider it in 32 bit. This should be INCR by uh, DP is 8 double bytes. bytes. Double takes 8 bytes. Yeah. So again, we are considering 32 bit machine. So 4 byte is 16, 16 bits right now. Uh, 4 byte is 8, 8 4 is a 32, right? Two is Two bits, four byte in thirty-two bit compiler. The size of integer is four bytes. Okay. Okay. So whenever I say plus plus IP, it will jump to the next state. It means next offset, next integer variable, like that. Okay. Because the offset will be incremented. So if integer is integer holds how much four. So always whenever you say IP plus plus, it will go plus four address. So if I was pointing to 4,000, it will go to four, it will start storing 4004, mm -hmm. 4008, 400C, 400E, oh, sorry, F, oh, D, E, F, no, one zero, like that, in X. 
When I say plus DP, if it is 400, next will be 4008, right? Yeah. And 400F, no, no, 10, 16 means 10, and hex, and so and so, correct? Okay. And when I say def P, it depends on the structure. So suppose if I had a struct device, long data and an end dividing you can list it so stroke device and if I say something like this, say. So now when I say, what will be the plus plus? So. Uh, int is um, one byte character. So it is, four, all will be four, four aligned. You remember padding, right? Yeah. So if we consider padding, character will also take four bytes. Correct. Four plus eight plus eight, 16. 16. So INCR by 16 bytes. So what is the idea that if you take a structure pointer, it is easy for you to manipulate and move across array of structures, contiguous memory. Okay. So we should not say the different types of, so it, it may be a bad choice. So say CP is equal to address of say eval underscore div and we'll say struct device eval underscore div. So what does it mean? So, um, is it correct? No, because it's not correct. Struct the, the, I'm doing a bad program and we're using a character pointer and I'm simply pointing it to a structure point device data, right? Yes. IP is also wrong. DP will also be wrong. <coughs> Nobody stops you to do that. There will be a warning from the compiler coming up. Okay. Mm -hmm. But we should not practice this because offset will be different. If you want to do some arithmetic tomorrow, it will be really a tough choice for you. Yeah. So always prefer using type pointers in your programming, depending on the kind of arithmetic you. So idea is if you want to manipulate the data, if you want to manipulate the data indirectly, prefer using type pointers. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Don't worry, we have a lot of sessions on pointers right now. Just started. Most of the now programming is based on the pointers. Okay. So is it clear? Yeah. Yeah. So I just wanted to explain about this logic that, you know, it's possible for you to declare this pointer. Okay, now let's take this with an example. That will get more clarity. Okay, the question is, have you worked earlier also on the pointers? You know? Um, no. Okay.
So let me stop this. I'll get into sharing of the I hope you can see the screen yet. Yeah, I can see. All right. So let's take a very quick example. So let's take a syntactical example, as I said, in data science, some under int see it can appear here also mm -hmm. or it can appear here also both are okay matter of a practice both are same okay hmm. both are same interchange mm -hmm. and ip can be assigned to say data and then star ip refers to ff what should be the result of this can you guess it will still be 100 right how Let's try this. I'll have to include the error. GCC. So it says that it is modified. So how did it modify it? This IP is a pointer. Pointer holds what? The address of the data. Uh, so indirectly, whenever we dereference a pointer, it is as good as a, that it is trying to modify the data. Okay. Getting it? It's a very interesting thing. See, I cannot say IP is equal to data. See, I'll just try to remove that. See what the warning comes. Mm -hmm. Though it is just a warning. If I run this program, behavior is what? Segmentation. Why is this segmentation fault? When you say data, it means as good as IP is equal to 100. 100 means some other location. Okay. 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 Hundred is not the data's value. It is hundred is like you know the address of some RAM memory location zero one two three. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. Like that. Okay. So that's why it is important. Now you see, we'll print all the address of them. So address of data is mod p. And we'll say address. We'll also print the address of pointer is address of IP.
So why are we using mod p is to print the address. Okay. Um, so p stands for like. Uh, so ip ip stands for the address. What it is holding? Pointer is holding an address. So the address of ip and address of data both should be same. Right, that's the purpose. Yes. When I say address of IP, it means where the pointer is located. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the value after dereferencing the pointer, it means when I dereference a pointer by saying star IP, it will fetch me the value, okay, of the location it has stored internally, which should be the same. Let's see. Okay, why it's segmentation fault? Another example, pointer is declared and pointer is not holding any address and you're simply trying to dereference. So it may have some garbage address. Uh -huh. okay. I, so pointer must hold to an valid address. Observe this. So integer variable data, data has a value of 100. Correct, we have initialized it to 100. Yes. Initially. Then I say I am declaring a pointer. Pointer internally holds what? The address of the data. And then by saying star IP, what I have done, I have modified the Content of data, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So if I don't use this line 11, line number 11, let me comment this. What happens? It's going to be the data will be not modified, it will hold the previous data. Data is 100. 100, yeah. Address of the data is means where the location, where is 100 stored in this that location. location. This is a stack location. So the the point, I mean. And pointer is also holding the same address, same. correct? Yeah. yeah. But where is pointer situated? Different address, you see. Pointer, okay, yeah. Right. Yeah. It's a little syntactical, but by using a couple of uses, it will be clear. So IP always, always remember, whenever we say IP, it refers to what? The location's address or location which it holds. Usually it will hold the type of location which refers to. Simple. Integer means it will hold integer's location. Okay. Okay. Now what is the use of this, by the way? The whole idea is not for learning the syntaxes. The whole idea is to learn about passing of the pointers. So there's a concept called as pass by value and pass by reference. Yeah. So passing. In passing technique, let's talk about pass by value. I will pass. I'll say in data is equal to. 
44 and then I'll say printer pass data after the pass by value is mod D. And then we'll say pass by address. Sometimes they also say pass by reference. Okay. Pass by reference is more correct result technical word for C++. Okay. Because C++ supports, sorry, supports pass by value, pass by address and pass by <coughs> reference also. Okay. So you'll always refer this as pass by address. Okay. Pass by address means you have to pass the address of a variable. In this case, how do you get the address of any variable? Up, apply an ampersand before it. Correct? Yes. Yeah. And then we print this value. Reference. Now we need to write these functions. Right. Word. Pass by value. I can use any variable name. Then I'll say. I think printing here doesn't make sense because we know that param is variable. So it will be always this only, correct? Yeah. Yeah, but still just for, you know, mm -hmm. our purpose. Pass by address means I'll be using a pointer as a variable. Now I can't say param is equal to this. How do I dereference it? I, I have already passed the ampersand here, you see. It means I declare a variable data and I pass the address here. Yeah. So this pointer is holding already the address of what? My data. Okay, and now, so there's no concept of address here, right? In the value, a copy will be generated. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is a copy gets generated and and pass by rev, the address here. So, yeah. Mod P, mod P. So address of param just p area and d reference p area. So what does it mean? Um. What will this be? This will be an address where pointer is allocated. Its own memory. Pointer's memory. Correct? Yes. When I just say the name param, it means it will hold the address of whose? Data's address. Mm -hmm. 
And when I say dereference it, what it does? It will access the value or it can even edit the value. So we'll try to do that. Let's edit the value. First, before edit, let it print the value. Then after editing, let's see. So I'll say param is equal to 4,500. So what will be the observation? That line number 34, when you run, a copy of this data will be generated. So there will be another memory location called as for param. Mm -hmm. And in because of that, whatever the changes you will make, it will be only within this function. The moment your function gets over, the value of this gets lost and the main function will never have the change accepted. So whenever you want your data to be modified through a function, a function must take one or pass the data by address. Whenever you do not want, okay, the data to be modified by anyone, then you should do pass by value. It means I don't care you, whatever the changes a particular function will make, it will not impact me. Okay, so that is the whole idea of pass by value. So hey, I'm giving you a copy of my data, not my actual data. Oh, okay. And with that copy or temporary, whatever you want to do, you do. Even though you edit your own data, I will not have any impact. But the moment you say pass by address, it means you want that function to edit something and give it back to you. Getting it? Okay. Yeah, that is the whole purpose. Change of value, I mean, change of the data. Yeah, if you want, yeah, you can. So, yeah, the idea is that in main or in the calling function, like in this line number 31, I have a function called as passing technique. Mm -hmm. And here we have pass by value. So what is that line number 34 expecting? That, hey, I have some data. I'm giving it to you, a copy of it. You do whatever you want. I don't care. Here, here, line number 22. Okay. So even though you have made the changes, param is equal to 4500, the scope of this is, it's a, it's a copy which is being modified, not the original data. Okay. Why? Because you have passed by val. Okay. Pass by val always generates a copy. Mm -hmm. Okay. So hence, if you're pa passing very large objects, okay, too many temporaries can be generated. For example, passing array. Yeah. So a question comes to you, can we pass array by val? Um, Say so if I have an array of 10 elements, yeah. can I create an array of 10, cop 10 copy and pass? Array of 10 can be copied and can be passed at 10 elements. Yeah, I mean, like it's reserved, 10, 10 elements will be reserved, right? I mean, if... That is declaration, right? But, but when we pass an array, can we pass by val? Um, I think yes. Uh... No, we cannot because passing the address, passing by array is always through address because otherwise you'll end up creating a lot of temporary. You remember while we talked about array, one of the very important thumb of rule was what? Array can never be passed by val, but by address, isn't it? Yes, yeah, yeah. So in array nodes, if you see, I'll always by address. Otherwise, too much of a temporary will be generated, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Where are we? Yeah. Where is here? Now let's try to run this program. So see first how it is going on, line number 33, correct? Right? 
Yeah, data. Then pass by value. So this print will come. Param pass by value. So param in pass by value is 4000. It means within this function, it is 4500. Line number 23 is being printed first. Correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. So, and then after that, we print this data after the pass by value. Still, it is 45. Correct? Yeah. So in the main data was 45, it is still remains 45. Now you see what we are doing. Pass by address we are doing. So after printing line number 35, it will jump to line number 37. And from there, it will make a jump to line number 25. Now in line number 25, it will print the line number 27. Where it is trying to print what? Where the pointer is. Sorry where the pointer's address is, where the address of data is, it means where is data located, the location of data, and then the content of it, which is correct? Yes. Yeah. yeah. After that, what it is trying to do, the pointer is trying to dereference the value. So dereferencing means whatever the location is, like in this case, zero cross BFE 773EC, this address. Mm -hmm. This is where the value of data is. So when I say dereference this address, it refers to what? The content of this address, which earlier was 45 and now we are modifying it to what? 4500 at line number 28. So what's happening when we come back again, line number 38 is being printed. The last line is what data after the pass by address and what has happened to data it has been uh, it means it has modified it right yes your value was 45 and now through this function it has modified it back so whenever you you will have a lot of coding situations where you want to have no side effect and somewhere you expect the side effect it means the changes are expected to come back Okay, so I'll pass from one frame to another frame, ask the another function to edit those jobs and give it to me. So after I call the function, my entire data set has been modified. Okay, so this is syntactical understanding about first pointer. So first I will leave you for some questions right now because just a, it's, it's a very new thing for hardware engineers at a high level language. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so some questions, if you have, you can ask me right now. Right up. So, um, I mean, in terms of the, the data, I mean, the size, like, Correct. If, if it's array of like the, I mean, if you are referring, referring to a, the, the, the address, right? Correct. So whatever zero X B. So whatever. that, that is, also defined by like number of data that with the, the bytes that we have or it's it's it depends on the architecture i mean see it depends on the architecture see it doesn't see integer point so one of the simplest question i can narrate is uh, what is the size of integer pointer what is the size of character pointer what is the size of void pointer what is the size of a struct pointer or what is the size of the Double point. Answer is addresses do not have types, correct? So, on a particular architecture, irrespective of the type of pointers which you have, size is going to be the same. Okay. Getting it? Okay. So, it depends on that compiler which you are using. If it's a 16 bit compiler, whether you are using an integer pointer or any other pointer, the size of the pointer will always remain same. Okay. So it will always be either in byte, it will be in half word, or it will be in word, or it will be a double word, depending. Or a quad if it is a 128 bit processor. Mm -hmm. All, even a structure, pointer also. Now let's take some more example on this. Okay. Like, Right. 
point so here i'll say in star ip what's the address of it then we'll say character star cp what's the address of then we will say Now you see, when you say IP, CP, DP, so first when you form a printer, okay, size of all, okay, okay. size of pointers. So I'll say mod D, mod D, mod D, mod D. So it becomes very clear to you. All the food is done. So size of I post type. Just size of I. 
Sayıda. Sayıda. Dibbi. Tamam sayıda. Dibbi. It says it does not know about D data. Oh yeah, the the character has single and inverted both. Uh, yeah, so that's one line. It's a good finding from you. Okay. Now let's see what else it has. Perfectly fine. Always. Now we need to call this function here. So the name of the function is type on tracing. So what are we trying to do is trying to see that what will be the size of the pointer in this case. Hmm. And you can see um, all are same. All are same, yeah. Because 32 bit. So size of pointer, no matter whatever the type it is, it is going to be the same on that compiler or the architecture. Okay. Okay. Got it. Yep. Yeah. So when you increment the address, okay, mm -hmm. it helps you. Now, how do you access? You know, those values, you know, about these data types are fine, right? You can easily access them. Yeah. Star data. So you can say, right? Because you have the pointer star IP, star CP, star D. Mm -hmm. When you say star dev P, what should it print? If you just say mod F, mod D slash N, say struct of device and details you have to print so mod d means what see it's a pointer to the structure right yeah so if i say mod d and directly say d reference this dev underscore data what should it print so it should print all the three values huh? but how will it know printf is not designed to decode all the members of the structure Tomorrow you can have thousands of structure declared by you with 15 different members. Isn't it? Yeah. So that's why you need to manually access those elements. You see here, mod D expects an argument of type what? Yeah. Integer, but somebody is trying to print something else like device type. It is not correct. So what do I do? The access can be dev p of arrow mark. It is a what? It is an example of structure pointer, correct? Dev p is an example of what? And a structure pointer, which is holding an address of an structure member data type, you see? So it's individual members has to be accessed by you. So dev p of what? Dev id. comma, dev p of what, dev underscore name, dev p of what, dev underscore stat. And we need to specify these different data types, device details. We can say name is equal to this, or id is equal to this, right? So in this case, yeah, id is equal to this. 
name is equal to mod s then we can say status is equal to mod d or c okay so this is how you can use a pointer to access the structure pointer is used for access the structure members okay as you can see device id device name and device status is being printed through what via pointers see you could also print directly also right dev data dot Yeah. Right, same thing. Without pointer, how do we use? Just like how do we access the structure? Instead of an arrow mark, we will say what? What is a member? Yeah. Dev underscore date. Dot. Dev underscore data. Dot. Dev. Yeah. Okay. Dev underscore data. Dot. I'm just trying to show that if it was a structure. you use the structure variable name dot the actual member right structure yeah. in union you access like that yeah but via pointers if you want to hold you will have to use what an arrow method okay right there is one more syntax which is prominent by using an different dereferencing me mechanism sometimes this arrow mark is not required sometimes you can use dot operationals but in that case you have to say something like this so also this also refers the same thing just for syntactic purpose that sometimes people don't use an arrow operator rather they use a formal method of star also oh, okay. so star dfp mm. means i d reference where it is and then dot dfp id just like as if it is a member okay just you know very similar to the way the line number 25th is being printed so if you want to use a dot operator with a pointer the pointer must be bracketized Okay. Because you know the operator dot will take precedent over star asterisk. That's why first we should dereference. So for syntactical purpose, you should know this also. Mm -hmm. Line number twenty four also. But most widely used pointer access is line number twenty three for structure scheme by using what an arrow mark. Arrow point. Okay. So pointer with an arrow mark. is a very easy way to understand that okay it is must be referring to some union or a structure member mm -hmm. it means there is a memory already existing there is a structure already existing mm -hmm. now what's very dangerous about is pointer should hold an valid address correct yes yeah so yeah. i am going to comment now line number 13 tell me what is the result going to be segmentation fault correct why because there's no there's no legal address i'm okay. going to comment this as well yeah so pointer cannot be just declared and start being accessed see something like this let the data be there i don't have any problem Okay, device data is there, but the pointer is not holding the address of the any address, right? Right. It's a it should hold address of any existing structure yeah. member, right? But no variable of structure member is being assigned to it. So what it does? It may be referring to some garbage, and naturally the result will be some junk. You can see here. you are lucky that segmentation fault has not come yeah yeah but it can 
refer to some you know crash also tomorrow so very very dangerous a pointer must hold a valid address of its type <clears throat> okay okay so this is something which is extremely basic introduction about pointers so just to conclude for today okay yeah. that there are three types of pointers which we use type pointers void pointers and function pointers type pointers are currently used for data manipulation yeah. so the idea is i will declare a pointer of a type maybe if i have to hold an address of an integer i will declare an integer point if i have to hold an address of a double data i will declare a pointer of double okay. correct if i have to hold the address of an structure then i'm going to use a pointer declaration of a structure point correct and to access them i can use an arrow mark specifically for structures and union members right mm -hmm. that's one we also learned that actual purpose of the pointer also can be used as a pass by address mechanism it means whenever we expect a, another function to edit or modify our value we pass them by address when we do not have any side effects to be seen in my calling function then i make use of pass by value pass by value will always generate temporary copy hence whatever the changes made in your copy will be not coming back to the call function or the call correct okay yeah 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 so you know it's a first basic, basic syntax may be possible try to you know go through this yeah i'll go through this and yeah. yeah and tomorrow once again we'll revise this we'll give some more examples tomorrow we'll talk about pointers to array okay and pointers passing with an array returning an array mm -hmm. how you can handle pointer to a pointer okay we'll spend as much as time on pointers and then you also try starting you know to write some code i'll give you one or two code task challenge Okay. You try to see how you can solve. Sure. Okay. So I think let's keep it here for today, and let's catch up tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Anish. Sure. Bye. Bye. Good. Good night.